my name is Holly Prince. And my name is Megan Mullen. Today we have a fascinating show produced by the 9th period TV programming class at Hopewell Valley Central High School. It is the result of a semester's worth of work. We have individual student group projects, a guest magician, kung fu demonstrations, and some fine examples of woodworking. That sounds interesting. It must have been a lot of hard work. Well, speaking of work, our first video is about students with jobs. This was made by Brian Velazzi, Rob Myers, Tyler Van Rensselaer, and Jared Carter. Let's watch the video. My name is Alex Jameson, and I work at the Pennington Quality Market. Well. Now I work in the dairy department, so I stock milk and eggs, cheese, that kind of stuff, you know. That's, that's what I usually do during the day. I guess the freedom of, you know, being back in that uh, dairy department kind of by myself, I don't have to really worry too much about customers or whatever. And, you know, I'm at the, I've, I've been there long enough where I'm not just like some scrub employee or whatever, you know. I, I kind of have some respect there. I get some respect then. You know, that's what I kind of like about working there. I work at a place called Firefighter Sales and Service on Pennington Lawrenceville Road. And I basically just refill fire extinguishers and sweep up and clean and vacuum and do all the dirty work. In the summertime, I don't. I can basically work as many hours as I want. So in the summertime, I can, I can work until 4.30 when everybody else leaves, or I can work till 7 or 8 o'clock and get as many hours over time as I want. My career at the Pennington Quality Market started at the end of my freshman year. That would be uh, June 8th, 1991. And uh, I started as a bag boy there. If I wasn't there, then nobody would sweep and nobody would vacuum or empty the garbage or wash everything or do the stuff that nobody else likes to do. I knew I could get a job there. You know, I had some connections with people who worked there, and it was my best possibility to get a job at such a young age. So that's why I went there. A typical day working at Jan's is, I don't know, generally work for about four hours, like four-hour shifts or five-hour shifts, and um, you just go in and you know, there's a lot of cleanup work, a lot of interaction with the customers. Um, I don't know, it's pretty fun. It's pretty, it's kind of laid back. Um, I started about two months ago because I had a number of car accidents over the winter and I had to pay back all the repairs to my parents. Oh, I'm in charge of the milk at the, in, during the evenings and all the dairy products, so I'm in charge of the dairy department at nights, and uh, I guess that could be a pretty responsible position, you know, making sure there's no uh, bad milk out there, you know, it's ex not expired or anything, and, uh, you know, I got to check stuff like that, and the cheese and the eggs, and I got to make sure they're all stocked, and that customers are satisfied with uh, the products they're buying from our store. It interferes, it doesn't really interfere with school right now, because there's a lot less pressure now it's the end of the school year and um, it, is, it interferes my social life because generally I have to work one weekend night from 6 to 11 and that's not that great but I don't know we deal with it. Well it conflicts in a way that you know school you know you go to school at 3 o'clock you know so 8 to 3 and it's a lot of the day and then you know I got an hour off or whatever and I gotta go to work at 4 you know to 9 o'clock so that kind of throws things off and I don't know if I'd say social life at school, I'd say it's hard to get your work done sometimes, you know, when you go home at nine you really don't want to do any homework, so that, that could be, that's, that's conflict sometimes. Okay, all right, what I like most about my job is I like talking to the people and I like working with ice cream and cookies and <laughs> um, I like that it's pretty close to my house so I don't have to go too far away. Boy, those students have hard but interesting jobs. I know. Imagine being in charge of the milk at Pennington Market. Well, at least I know who to complain to if my milk is bad. 
All kidding aside, the Pennington Market does employ a lot of our high school students. Hey Holly, do you have a job? Well, kind of. I work in an office and I enjoy what I do, but I don't plan on furthering my education there. How about you, Megan? Do you have a job? Well, yes, I do. I work for an office, too. It's a doctor's office not far from the high school. I've been there for three years. I'm a part of the clerical staff. My job title is file clerk. I enjoy what I do, and I do um, intend on furthering my education to better my career. Well, that seems as though it requires a lot of time, hard work, and dedication. That's right, and that's what's also required in our next video. How do you mean? Well, Holly, our next film is a segment on kung fu demonstration, but on put on by three determined young athletes. Let's watch Keeping in Mind the Beauty of the Art along with the intensity of the various presentations. Right now I'd like to introduce to you our three performers as they are warming up. Um, the first performer we're going to introduce to you is going to be Luis Diaz. Uh, Luis Diaz is um, currently a second degree uh, black belt in Tang Soo Do, has been uh, training at Mercer Kung Fu Taiji Academy uh, for a little over a year and is currently in the final month and a half of instructorship training. Uh, he's going to be performing for you a couple of routines today. Um, next, I want to uh, introduce to you Brianne Sudia. Uh, Brianne Sudia is only eight years old, and she's been training for two years. She is our youngest demo team member, and also in her last tournament happens to be a champion at taking first place. Uh, her future is very, very bright, and she is known as one of our most animated performers. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Kelly Cramp. Kelly Cramp has been training with us for over four years, actually four and a half now, and is currently first degree black sash, is working on her second degree black sash, as well as her first degree black sash in southern style. Uh, this young lady has been rated nationally for the last three years, is currently ranked number two in the nation. Uh, two weekends ago, she took first place in the uh, Battle of Atlanta, and this week will be competing for another first place in Houston. Um, <clears throat> we're all very, very proud of each of these individuals, uh, ranging in ages from eight years old, 10, and all the way up to 24. At this particular time, we would like to uh, start our performances. Uh, we're going to start our performance off with a performance of Small Plum Blossom Southern Style by Luis Diaz. The Southern Style Gung Fu is a style of Gung Fu that is designed after tiger, leopard, dragon, snake, and crane styles. The emphasis in these performances is on strong root in the leg, powerful, but great varied hand techniques. This particular routine is from the Choile foot system of Kung Fu, and it is considered an intermediate level routine. You can see the great speed, focus, and concentration required to perform these routines. All right, Luis Diaz. Uh, next up, we'd like to introduce our national champion, Kelly Cramp. Kelly Cramp is going to be performing an apparatus or weapon routine. Uh, this is Dao Shu or broadsword play. Routines come from both southern and northern China. This particular routine is from the northern part of China. It emphasizes longer range motions and more jumping techniques. As was noted earlier, Kelly Cramp is ranked in black belt division, children's number one in the nation at this routine.
besides being an excellent sport, these exercises are great for youngsters to develop focus, concentration, and will benefit all other sports by learning proper body dynamics, anatomy, and use of energy. Kelly Cran. Next up, we'd like to bring up one of our younger performers, Brianne Sudia. Brianne Sudia is going to be performing for you what we call B-level Chan Chuan. Chan Chuan is a Chinese word that means long fist. This routine is an intermediate level routine. Combining the techniques of punching, kicking, leaping, balance, standing, blocking, evading, striking with the palms and elbows, kicking and smashing. For most people who have not seen authentic Chinese wusu techniques before, and if you have any experience with karate, you'll see how much these routines differ, not only in their length and complexity, but also in their beauty of organization and choreography. Brianne Sudia. All right. <laughs> that was quite an exciting performance. I'm a little be bewildered by it. I wonder if Bruce Lee got his start with an organization like that. Why aren't there any women kung fu stars? I don't know. What's up next? Well, you should be familiar with this one. It's a video we made with Laurie Basarab, Basarab and Laura Valhurst. Ours is next? Good. We interviewed the senior class advisors, officers, and students about the prom, and we made this video. We hope you enjoy it. Oh, the plans for the senior prom. Well, first of all, the senior prom is on June the 3rd. That's a Friday. And it starts at 7, and it's over at midnight. And it's at the Masonic Temple in Trenton. And it's a beautiful place. And all the seniors are going to really like it when they get in there and they see it. Well, we went to a lot of places. We went to Princeton. We went to uh, Forestall Village, the Marriott, and the Hilton. And we went through a lot of places until we came to Trenton, the Masonic Temple. It was just it. We just knew that that's where it would be. And so we brought uh, Mrs. Young and Mr. Loper back, our advisors, and they really liked it. And they said, well, this is, this is it. <laughs> it was the place for the prom because it was very convenient. It was a very beautiful place, all marble everywhere. And uh, it didn't cost us anything. And it was like, I don't know, it was just perfect. And we're going to have music by Sound Choice, Dave Heffel, who's the disc jockey. And we've already gotten suggestions for the kind of music that most people want to hear. And if people have more suggestions, we're going to take them and we'll give them to him too. And we're going to have a buffet dinner and the uh, food has already been picked out. And I think there's going to be something for everyone. Yes, there are going to be favors. Uh, we sat down with the senior class officers and we showed them the things that were available. And they picked out some really nice favors for uh, the class. There's a um, long stem wine glass for the girls and a glass mug for the boys and it'll be imprinted with the date and the high school and the name of our prom and the theme of our prom is These Are Days and that's from the song 10,000 Maniacs. What a post prom party is. Well that's the uh, where everybody's going to go after the prom just to relax and not drink and have a good time and win prizes. 
host prom party is immediately after the prom and it runs until about 5.30 in the morning and there's going to be door prizes and food and music and all kinds of good things and uh, we try to encourage all the seniors to come even if they don't come to the prom because they're going to have a good time they're going to be with their friends and it might be one of the last times they're with all their friends for an all-night party chaperone but nice um, the post prom party is done by parents forum and it's a way to keep kids from like after the prom going out and drinking and driving and stuff like that and uh, this year Lloyd Bathrab's mother is the uh, chairman and my mom's the chairperson of the decorations and it's just it's just like, gonna be a lot of fun they're gonna have movies and like a place for everyone just to lay down if they get really tired and at the end of the night which is like five o'clock in the morning <laughs> they're gonna um, they're gonna give away prizes and stuff like that so it's just a good way to keep kids from drinking and driving and being unsafe prom night so uh, yeah I plan on going I plan on staying all night and winning one of the prizes <laughs> We wish we could have shown you more scenes from the prom. It was truly a memorable night. I'm sure that everyone will remember the setting and how elegant and sharp the students looked. What a way to end the year. A prom, a picnic, graduation. Snap out of it, Megan. We still have more of the show to do. Okay, already. Up next, we have Mr. Johnson, a veteran woods teacher at the high school, with some of his premier students, Josh Brees, Joe Millet, and Courtney Upman. Hi, my name is Mr. Johnson, and uh, I'm a woodshop teacher at uh, Hopewell Valley High School, and uh, I've been teaching here for 27 years. And uh, right now at the high school, we have basically five programs that you can select in the industrial arts program in the line of woodworking. Uh, woodworking one is a basic woodworking class that is uh, designed to give the kids experience in all the different tools, machines, and materials that we have in the shop. And that is done through an assignment-oriented type program. Uh, the kids in that program will make approximately six or seven projects during the course of the year. Uh, the second year and the third year of woodworking two and avocational woodworking, uh, the students that take that class are entitled to select a project or projects of their own choice, something preferably that would take the entire school year to make, and work from professional blueprints and try to accomplish that. And we have a couple of those with us today to show you. Um, also in the third year or the fourth year of high school, uh, the kids can take a fine woodworking class, which is a class that is designed to provide them with experiences in woodworking that they would not normally get involved in unless they took a course of this nature. Some of the type of work that's done in there is bending and laminating, uh, marquetry, veneer work, inlay work, and other things that are just not your every normal everyday projects or woodworking experiences. And there are some kids as seniors that do independent studies and the main objective of the independent study program is to get them to work in an area that they have not been exposed to, select the topic, do a little paper, a research paper, and also a project which will be presented to a panel of teachers and friends at the end of the school year for credit. Um, with me today in our Woodworking One program, uh, Josh Brees uh, is a ninth grader who has made several of the projects that we have for the beginning course. And uh, Josh is going to explain to you a little bit about what we do in that program. Yeah, the first project you make is a toy. It's uh, made of scraps of woods we have. And the wheels are done on the lathe by, you turn them on the lathe, and then the scraps of wood, then we finish it. Then we turn it into a, a lifeline. It's a donated for needy kids in the area. Second project is a faceplate turning on the lathe, which is a bowl and the faceplate's attached to the back and you spin it and you carve it into the things you want. Then the third project is a wall sconce, which is a candle holder, and you cut it with power tools and some parts with hand tools, and the candle holder itself is done on a between centers turning. The third pro or the fourth project is a jewelry box, which is, uh, you learn how to do the different cuts, such as a rabbit cut and a mi miter cut. Then the insides of both are lined with a flocking material, which is paint. You put two coats of paint, then uh, you spray this material in, and then it makes it a velvet look. 
and next year in Woods 2, I'm looking forward to making a piece of furniture. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Joe Muley, who was a junior last year as a sophomore, made a beautiful gun cabinet in our class and uh, wanted to continue his interest in woodworking, and this year is working on a dining room table which opens up and has two leaves. And maybe Joe can explain a little bit about his project. Okay, this is my third year in the woodshop program. Uh, last year I had a lot of fun making my cabinet, and I want to make something else this year. And uh, the first week of September, everybody comes to school that's taking that woodshop program. And we get to look through all kinds of plans and books of what we would like to make. And I looked through a book, and this table caught my eye, and I said, oh, I'd like to make that look nice at home. So I took the time, September, I started getting everything ready, laying out plans and measurements. And I began, if we get a, take a look, I began making the pedestal, which consisted of four legs, which were routed into a, a pedestal base, a solid, solid piece of oak with a, a bottom cap. And that took me to a little bit past January. And at that time, after I finished sanding that, and then I had to go onto the tabletop, and uh, said the project is solid oak. So with the tabletop, I had to cut equal width, planks of oak to make the, the top itself and cut it on a circular circular pattern on the bandsaw and then put it with two table slides to make the leaves. I'm going to take the tabletop off. Okay. It's not fully assembled yet, but this is this is how this uh, consists of two slides for the leaves, which will accommodate make the table accommodate from four to eight people. And this is the base where it will be mounted. With us today we have Courtney Upman who is a senior, and Courtney has gone through our entire program. She's had Woods 1, Woods 2, Avocational Woodworking, and is now in our Fine Woodworking program as a senior, and has done some nice marquetry work and also some bending and laminating. And Courtney, maybe you'd like to tell the people about your projects. All right, what I did for this is a marquetry project. It's, um, you take the different colored veneers, or you buy um, the piles of veneer, and you take the different colors, and you cut them out so that they fit into each other and by doing this you can form a pattern or a picture like this picture and then you just it gets all glued down together onto a piece of wood and you can come out with a box like this and um, this is the laminating project and this is um, two pieces of red oak which are glued together and they're bent into this this form and then then you push them together and they're um, fitted into the um, turned handle which is turned on the lathe and um, comes out and you can put, you can net it here through on the side, our little holes where you put the net into and that's laminating. Maybe you'd like to tell them about the uh, veneering jewelry box that you're working on right now. Right now uh, it's not completed yet but it's, um, it's, a, it's a jewelry box about that big and it's the um, like kind of veneer somewhat veneer in here and you glue it down and it's all lined on the sides of the box and it has drawers and at the top there's a rose which is different color of veneer and it has two drawers and the lid it opens on hinges it's pretty thank you Courtney uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, I want to thank my students for coming today and, and sharing their experiences with us these students really showed some fine examples of craftsmanship I don't know if I can do that kind of work you probably could. According to Mr. Johnson, interest and desire are the major factors in success for these projects. Well, anyway, I was impressed. So was I. Next up, we have some more video of the Kung Fu performers. On this segment, we will see a demonstration of defense techniques and then a single performance by an up-and-coming youngster. What we've shown you is empty hand routines and also a weapon set, uh, which, by the way, that particular weapon set was a standard for international competition. Uh, but we also practice self-defense skills, and uh, that is a major part of what we do. To demonstrate and to rehearse the applications for real-life combat, we have what is called sparring routines. Next up, I'd like to bring back out Luis Diaz and Kelly Cramp. Our two performers are going to perform for you something which is required for their uh, rank advancement, their southern style uh, sparring routine number two. The opening is a traditional salute, showing courtesy and respect.
one would think that at young Kelly's size, she might have difficulties with the larger Luis Diaz. As you find out, through the proper use of body dynamics, understanding of kinesiology, even a smaller person can hold their own against a much larger person. Of course, these performers are very highly trained. And as always, at the end of all routines, courtesy and respect is shown. All right, Luis Diaz and Kelly Cramp. Right now, I'd like to bring back out Luis Diaz in a performance of our beginner uh, Southern Star routine we call Lin Wan Kun. The translation of this means the continuous and returning fists. This is from our Southern Star Kung Fu. Again, this is our beginner routine. Whoa! The movements come from three different animal forms. Tiger, leopard, Whoa! and snake styles. Notice the energy. Awesome, Louis Diaz. Very good, very good. Well, wasn't that interesting? I know, that Kung Fu really amazes me. Maybe you should take a class. Maybe I will. It would come in handy when my brother <laughs> reads my diary. Hey, Megan, have you seen the baseball team this season? Yeah, I went to every game. What was their record? I don't know. I thought you went to every game. I did, but I was too busy watching the players. Yeah, well, strong guys in tight pants sounds like a spectator sport to me. Well, you're in luck. Our next video is about the 1994 varsity baseball team. Produced by Paul Goodman, Russ Kivler, and Matt Benassi. Let's go to the videotape. Everybody, you know, we're a young team, we're mostly juniors, you know, we only have a couple seniors and uh, everybody's got to contribute in order to have a good, good season this year and, uh, you know, we just got to play good solid baseball. We don't have, you know, we don't have many, like, you know, big hitters, you know, we just, everybody has to do the little things right and then hopefully we'll have a decent year. Well, um, Casey and I have to pitch good. Um, let's see. Uh, we have to have we have to have good defense because our offense isn't really that that strong this year. We can't make a lot of errors in the field, and uh, pitchers we have to make them put the ball in the ground, make them put it in play, make our infield and outfield make most of the plays. We can't because um, and we have to well we have to pick up the bats a little bit because um, you know they're not that strong this year. We have to put the ball in play and make the other team make the errors. Jordy Kerr is really the secret to the whole thing. If Jordy can give me some good innings, we very well might, might do all right. Uh, last year he peed pitch well in some games and then come apart in others. He had sore arm problems. Uh, if, if that's the case, we're going to have troubles. If not, and he comes through and does something for us, uh, the pitching staff could, could be all right. The second problem is going to be outfield. Uh, I've got Chris Hoppy in right, who played right field last year, and should do all right. Matty Kerr is in center, never played center field before. I think he's probably going to have s some troubles picking the ball up until he gets the idea how, how that one works. Left field, I've got a number of people. Uh, Peepsack's going to play there. Burns is going to play there. Uh, 
uh, Andrew Carden might end up out there. Um, anybody who can hit, who I can get in the lineup, is going to end up playing left field because that's the, that's the open slot. But right now, the outfield is, 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 the, biggest, is the biggest problem. And, and it's not a problem. It's just a question mark how fast they're going to come along. I don't think there's, you know, baseball is a funny game. You could have one best player in the county and not be successful. Uh, I don't think there is one person that, that can do that. I think it's going to be a, have to be some kind of a, a collective effort. I think that we're going to have trouble scoring runs. Uh, I, I don't see anybody as being a big hitter. Maybe Casey can hit the ball out, but that's about it. The rest of these guys are going to have to make contact. They're going to have to put the ball in play. And we've always had trouble scoring runs, and I think this is not going to be any different. The secret is, can our pitchers hold the other team down, and can we scramble for a couple of runs to squeak them out? That's what it's going to be all about. Well, um, I guess I'm going to basically be an outfield backup and uh, play a little first base maybe and fill in, in the infield if they need me. That's pretty much it. Um, basically the same as last year. Um, shortstop, I'll probably be batting number two. Um, that's it, just about. First, first, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have a good year on the mound. Uh, hope to improve on, you know, a lot of little little things. My mechanics throw a little harder, you know. Uh, at the plate, I like to hit over 400, you know, being a top top couple top batters in the league. I'd like to hit about I don't know, three or four home runs. You know, lead the league, have you know, being the leaders, RBIs, et cetera, stuff like that. Suddenly, he started chasing me down the street. Those players sure were good. I don't know how good they are, but they sure look good. Holly, do you think it's hard to play baseball? It's probably difficult, but with practice you could probably become an excellent player. Well, you know what is difficult? What, Megan? Magic. Magic? Magic's easy. All you do is ma wave a magic wand and make something disappear. Wish I could use that with trick with my parents' car. Why would you want to do that? Because I accidentally scratched it when I was pulling it into the gar garage. How bad is it? It's not too bad from a distance. How far from a distance? About a hundred yards away. Well, maybe this next video will take your mind off it. Josh Kaplan, a sophomore at Hoval, will entertain us with his amazing and spectacular magic tricks. Hi, I'm Josh Kaplan. Um, I'm a sophomore here at Hopewell Valley Central High School. I'm going to be doing a couple of magic tricks for you today. Um, I got started in magic in seventh grade before I moved here. And can I have a participant from the audience? Hold the handkerchief. Like yeah. Have one ball. Put the handkerchief over the ball. The handkerchief away. Two balls. Put the handkerchief back. The handkerchief away. One ball. Put another ball. Here. Put the handkerchief over the ball. Three balls. Put the handkerchief back. Two balls. Okay. Have a trick here called a penetration frame. And what you do, you take a card, put it in the frame somehow. Put it in the frame. Cards in the frame. Take the card. It's not in the frame. Card's still there. Do it one more time. Cards added a frame. Cards still there. Mm. This is called an Okito coin box. And what you do, you take the box and you put a coin in the box. Take the cover, cover the box. Box on top of your hand. If you tap the box, it comes out in your hand. Box is empty. And if you're ever at a dinner party or something, you need a candle or something right away, just light a lighter, pretend it's a candle, put the 
pan and a fire and a candle comes and it's lit and everything. Thank you. I'm Josh Kaplan, and if there's anyone in his, in his high school or Timberline that's interested in magic, come and see me because I'd like to meet some other people. Thank you. Whoa, Josh is on his way to being the next David Copperfield. I know. How does he do those card tricks? I don't know. Maybe he'll tell us. I don't think so. A good magician never reveals his secrets. Our last video is another segment of the Kung Fu demonstration. Do you still want to take Kung Fu? I don't know. It takes years of training and hard work, but I'd be afraid I'd become a bully. Kung Fu is only supposed to be used in self-defense. Well, I'll decide after we watch this last video. Uh, again, let's bring back out our national champion, uh, Kelly Cramp. She's going to perform for you a very difficult routine, which we call A-level, or uh, individual set. This is based on the Chun Chun system, long fist. She is currently rated number one in the nation at this routine. The first thing our viewers should note is the differences between the northern and southern systems. The use of aerials, high kicks. Both systems use long arm sweeping maneuvers. Balancing maneuvers. At all times, the performer is not just thinking about their performance, but also about the application of their movements for self-defense. This is what makes the spirit of the performance so strong. And you can see these routines are extremely athletic. So one will get into very good condition by practicing them. Very nice, Kelly Cramp. I would just like to close with some words and, um, uh, about the performances in which you have seen and a little bit about what martial arts is about in general. Uh, first off, the performances that you've seen are wusu, uh, or what we call gung fu from China. Uh, this differs from the karate systems that you may see at other schools and demonstrations or even on TV. However, most of the performers that you witness in the movies and TV usually practice Chinese martial arts because of the physical foundation that it gives the body. An excellent um, uh, uh, system to practice because the art will train the body in an all-around way and benefit all movement and all sports as well as the health. Um, at Mercer Gung Fu Taiji Academy, uh, we try to give the full breadth of the martial arts in its modern perspective, which is it to emphasize health and community first, courtesy and respect, focus and concentration. Uh, those things precede any type of um, morbid emphasis that we might have on protecting ourselves. While self-protection is necessary and sometimes very unfortunate, uh, useful, uh, still our main emphasis is for the betterment of the self and for society. If we need to defend ourselves, then we certainly have the techniques to do so. Um, I would like to say about martial arts in general that uh, it is this particular teacher's perspective that every youth and adult really can benefit from martial arts training. Uh, martial arts training properly taught is something which should be constructive and never negative. Uh, these athletes are some of the best trained athletes in any sport you're going to find. Um, and they have risen their level uh, up to international standards. Uh, young Kelly Cramp, for example, at the age of nine last year, uh, missed making our national team by three one hundredths of a point, of which there are only eight spots um, uh, noted. Um, and that's out of all the Wusu practitioners in the United States of America. Um, so we're really, really proud of her, and as she tries out again this year, we're looking for that spot to be there for her.
Um, I've had the good fortune of training at least uh, two other athletes to represent our country in international competition. And uh, we invite you out to the Mercer Kung Fu Tai Chi Academy. Um, we thank you uh, very, very much, Hopo Valley uh, Central High School, for inviting us here today. If there's any information that you would like, you can always reach us. Uh, uh, we're in the phone book. Um, and you're welcome at any particular time. We're open seven days a week. Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We'd like to thank Mr. Flagel and Mr. Dillon and all the students and guests who have made this possible. It has really been an experience I'll never forget. What kind of an experience? A pleasurable one. Don't you feel the same way? Of course I do. Goodbye for now. I'm Holly Prinz. And I'm Megan Mullen, thanking you for the period 9 TV programming class.